In this video, we are going to learn how to implement SQL caching in ASP.NET. There are two types of SQL caching in ASP.NET. One is poll based and another is push based. In this video, we are going to learn poll based SQL caching, uh, caching. And the push based SQL caching we will see into the next video. So to implement SQL catch poll based where data is cached in the SQL server instead of server memory, we can follow this approach. So the first approach is that we will have to enable our database to support the SQL caching. Okay. So before enabling my database uh, for SQL caching, my database structure was like this. This is my demo database and the tables and these are my tables listed here. And then if we have to enable the uh, SQL catch dependency for our demo database then what we need to do is that we need to execute ASP.NET underscore ridge SQL dot exe command and remember that you will have to execute this command by going to your Visual Studio command prompt and uh, there might be possibility that while executing this command you may get an error so you will have to make sure that you are running this Visual Studio command prompt under the administrator privilege so in order to do that what you can do is that you can go to the Visual Studio command prompt icon and right click that and select run as administrator and then it will run the Visual Studio command prompt as, as an administrator once you have done that then what you need to do is that you, we need to write uh, the command name ASP.NET underscore SQL dot exe as displayed here and then dash s dash s is nothing but the parameter to that accepts the server name on which our database exists so in, in this case we have specified this as the server name and in this we are trying to log in with the username demo and my password is also demo and then we have to specify the database name on which we want to enable the SQL catch dependency so I have written uh, dash d is the parameter and then demo database and ed dash ed is the last parameter that we need to specify in order to enable the database for SQL catch dependency so let me rephrase again first ASP.NET underscore regsql.exe dash s and the server name dash u in the username dash p is the password for the, the database and dash d is the database in which you want to enable the SQL catch dependency and then dash ed please remember that these uh, com uh, commands and all the parameters are case sensitive so we'll have to make sure that you are writing all these uh, uh, commands like dash s dash d and dash p all these parameters in the same case as it is written here now once we have done that then you will see that your uh, my database structure will change and here you will notice that I have couple of a stored procedure added here you can see that this many stored procedure all the stored procedure name that is starting with ASP.NET underscore SQL catch is added because we have enabled the SQL catch dependency for this database there is no change in the table notice it here there is only change in the stored procedure now once we have done that then what we need to do is that we need to enable the database table for the SQL catch dependency till now we have just enabled the database for SQL catch dependency now we are going to enable the database table for the SQL catch dependency so in order to enable the database table for SQL catch dependency we need to again use the same command ASP.NET underscore ridge SQL and dash s is the server name dash u the username of the database dash p is the password of the database and dash d is the name of the database in which my table exists and then dash t and then personal detail is the table name dash t and the table name so in this case I am enabling SQL catch dependency into personal details detail database table and then dash et dash et basically tells that you have to enable the uh, SQL catch dependency into this table and again the same thing all these uh, 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 commands are case sensitive once you have enabled the database table for the SQL catch dependency then you will notice that under the table st uh, tree structure you will have one another table created called ASP.NET underscore SQL catch tables for change notification 
this table will automatically get created whenever you uh, enable a database table uh, for the SQL catch dependency once you have done that then you might want to list all the tables that has uh, SQL catch dependency enabled so in that case what you can do is that you can f uh, fire again the spinet underscore com uh, command with uh, minus s as the server name minus u is the username of the database minus p is the password of the database and minus d is the name of the database and then lt means list tables and it will basically give you all the tables of that database whose SQL cache dependency is enabled now uh, if we try to select all the records from the newly added table ASP.NET underscore SQL catch tables for change notification then you will notice that for each table in the database that has been SQL catch dependency enabled there will be a record created here for example I have enabled uh, SQL catch dependency for the personal detail table so you can see the table name is the personal detail and notification created and the changed these things are maintained so for each table in the database that has SQL catch dependency one record will be added into this ASP.NET underscore SQL catch tables for chain notification table now in case you want to disable uh, the database table for the SQL catch dependency then you need to fire the same command that you had fired to enable the database table the only difference is that in the last instead of writing ET you will have to write DT means di di disable table and that will basically disable the uh, uh, database table for the SQL catch dependency once you have done that then you are done with all the configuration that you need to use for the SQL Server database in order to support the SQL catch dependency now the next thing is to add the web.config file setting so let us add it so uh, let me copy paste this whole code of this my web.config file copy and I'm just copying from the pasting from the top so I'm just overriding my web.config file and this as well yes now let me tell you what is in this this is my server name so first we have a connection string tag where we have specified the database connection string called conSTR and then under the system.web we have to write our catching tag under that catching tag there is a SQL catch dependency children element and we have written that SQL catch dependency enabled equal to true means we want to enable the SQL catch dependency and once we have enabled the SQL cache dependency then we'll have to add the databases tag it means that in how many databases we want to enable the SQL cache dependency so here because we have only one so we have written under database we have written add name equal to demo database and connection string equal to con str this is the important this name can be anything demo database one or two anything but the main uh, important uh, property here is connection string name in this case connection string name is my con str so this both must be same once we have specified the connection string then we need to specify the poll time poll time is basically used by the SQL cache dependency to go and check to the database table uh, for, for any uh, update into the database record so here we have specified that poll time is 500 milliseconds it means that after every 500 milliseconds it will go to the database and check for the uh, modification in the database tables that has SQL catch dependency enabled once we have done that then now we need to just write the code of <coughs> my uh, ASPX page so I'm going to write the code so here is my ASPX page oops yes paste and in this what we have is that we have a label control and then we have a grid view control and then we are copying and pasting the code behind so let me do that so I'm copying from here to here and pasting it into my code behind okay and then I am again copying the rest of the code and we are done yes now let me modify the uh, the code 
because it might have some error while copying and pasting and what I'm doing is that I'm going to use the name space so system system dot configurations using system dot data using system dot data dot SQL client that's it now uh, looks like we are almost done and we need to use one more namespace called using system dot uh, web dot catching for the SQL catch dependency object and hopefully we are done yes now let me tell you what what is this here what we have done is that okay looks like there is one more problem here because we do not have underscore constr variable so string underscore constr variable local configuration manager dot connect string con str dot connection string now first what we have done is that we have declared one page level variable called underscore con str and in that we are uh, retrieving the web dot config file connection string okay using configuration manager that exists into system dot configuration namespace and in the page load uh, event we are first writing the current data time uh, into the label control you can see that this label control and then we are checking for if the page is not post back then uh, go ahead and call the get data method in the get data method what we are doing is that first we are checking for the uh, one minute yeah first we are checking for the uh, catch of personal detail data if it is not null then there is something stored into this catch and what we are doing is we are trying to unbox that catch into the table variable and we are writing into the label saying that being loaded from the catch and if this catch of personal detail data is null means there is nothing here then we are using the edu.net to execute uh, the SQL select statement Ideally, you should use a stored procedure here. Please watch my video of edu.net in order to know how to use a stored procedure. And once we have uh, fetched the data from the database to the data table, what we have done is that we have instantiated the SQL catch dependency object by passing the uh, here. See, the first parameter is the database entry name. So, my database entry name is the demo database. And then, comma the second parameter is the table name we want our personal detail table to enable the SQL cache dependency right and then what we have done we have used the cache.insert method by passing the key this is the key you can see that this is the same key I have used here and then the data to store so in this case I want to store the table and then the dependency so in, the, in my case it is SQL cache dependency and uh, once we have done that then you will notice that this table uh, data will be stored into the catch and this will basically store into the SQL server database no, not into the server memory because we have enabled the SQL catch dependency here you can see here and then we are writing simply uh, in the label saying that being loaded from the database that's it and uh, after that we are specifying the data source of the get view to the table and then we are calling the data bind method that will basically bind the data from the uh, table to the grid view now let me go ahead and run this page so view in browser ok looks like there is some problem here hold on ok this problem is because this entry name this database entry name must be same as what we have mentioned here this is the entry name so here I am writing demo database 1 so here also we will have to write demo database 1 now let me run this page again you can see that the record is being loaded from the database now when I will refresh the page you can see that being loaded from the catch you can see that it will, it will keep loading from the catch if I will refresh the page now let's go to the database and uh, modify this personal detail record okay so edit it is taking little time yeah we are done now you will notice that is still let me show you that still there is no change new record 20 and false now we have added one more record so naturally the personal detail table has been modified so when I will refresh you can see that it is coming from the database and the new record is being added here and in the next time onwards again it will come from the catch 
so whenever any record of the personal little table will be modified then the SQL catch dependency will automatically expire the catch and next time when the page will be hit then the record will be loaded from the database and once the record has been loaded from the database and put into the catch then uh, on next time the data will again come from the catch unless the record is again being modified into the personal detail table so hope it, it was easy to understand if not then please uh, let us know in the email